Greetings, people of Earth. I'm Rick Harold. Thanks for listening to my podcast and watching my videos. Today, we're going to talk about how I tortured people, unfortunately, in software. So the story goes back. When you create a product, especially, I'll say a development product, but it's true for really anything, and you don't use the product directly, many times you don't truly understand how your customers live. And that was something that happened when I, at Install Shield, I didn't really truly understand. Now, I'm an empathetic person, and I like to think about the customer, and I like to think about who's using it and all this kind of stuff. And I listen to the support people when they come in with, stuff, with information. And the developers, and we all would de debate and talk to marketing, and I'd, Rush and I would debate endless hours about this stuff. Um, but if Rush and I would go on tours to customers, I mean, it's a sales tour, but you're also going out to hear and listen to customers' requests, talk a little bit about where you're going. And that was very valuable and something that we also push to have developers do. And I, I don't mean to focus just on developers, but I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Because we would be taking taking on tours of companies, and they would take you to the desk, and here's a guy who's working in installation. That's where I first saw a guy having install shield manuals on his thing. And that's all this guy did. And this was early on. And I don't know what our sales were at the time, but let's say we had 35 people, 40 people at the company. It was amazing for me to see that people's resumes and their lives were this installation and it was our product that they were using. The other thing that I would hear when you'd sit in these meetings and you listen is the suffering <laughs> that went on with the product. Suffering I could never have anticipated. Our use of the product was not just a testing thing. We had to do installation of our own stuff, but it was limited. It wasn't real world, right? Not in the whole real world sense. I mean, our product, as I've mentioned before, it ended up on a billion machines used by 400,000 ISVs doing all told sets of operations. There's no way you could possibly anticipate everything. But hearing their problems, what they were going through, um, was really an eye-opener. And, and it was more in a sense that I telling me, I don't know the true pain our customers have. And that means all the developers and the other people at the company don't know either. So it was something for us to make sure we got people out in front of the customer, listening to the requests. And customers would have great requests. They would also have off-the-wall requests. You can't do everything, but at least seeing them, and this sounds obvious, but as a human being and someone who's suffering with a problem, listening to them, seeing where they're sitting and working on stuff is significantly different than support people passing along the necessary procedures or quality changes or change requests or whatever that would be argued in meetings with marketing and development and management. Um, because at least we would have a perspective. We're all sitting there. We all met the customer. We all saw their problems at one time or another, right? You're not going to see everybody. You're not going to see every problem, but you feel the customer's pain and you can at least feel it when you hear them describe something versus, Jesus is going to be another hassle for me. Um, I already got 10 things I have to fix. You can at least project yourself to the extent everybody's pos able to do that into the customer's shoes. So it's something you really can't teach, my opinion. You have to bring the developer, the marketing person, the product manager, the one defining the functions, even to support people periodically and see the customer or have customers come in, we would do that too, um, to connect with people, right? And we had a, a product wasn't super expensive, so it's not like we have $10,000 products and it's easy to do that. Ours, you know, our product was three ninety five dollars initially and then the, the product price went up and there were tiers. But So it wasn't always optimal. You can't just send everybody out all the time. But it was something that if you consistently did it and enough people did it, it would through osmosis somewhat or organizationally would become part of our thinking. So it was great experience. It's something that I'm always very excited to talk to customers, to listen to people. You know, as we go through our, our product here and our crowdfunding 
you know, we're going to be very interested in hearing and seeing people use the product. Um, so that's it. Thanks again for listening and take it easy.